folks, welcome back to another block bench tutorial. I'm going to be adding on to that series that I made a while back. Uh, before, I didn't know how to make blocks. I have been researching it slowly and playing around with the settings for my own mods just to kind of get the idea of what things might um, need to be mentioned in the video. So uh, before we start, uh, there's two different options. Well, there's actually, uh, I think, yeah, two different options that you have. Uh, bedrock, which is only for the Bedrock uh, version of Minecraft, and then there is the Java um, Java block slash item option. Now you're going to want this option right here to make a block, so we're going to click on that, and then you're going to be presented with uh, your um, properties for your project. So the first thing that we need to need is, um, sorry, the first thing that we're gonna need to do is uh, name the actual file. So um, make sure to use English characters. You can use numbers and underscores. So if we were to call it block, or we'll call it simple underscore block, and then we could do like, underscore again one and that would be a valid name uh, for a parent model don't use this at all make sure it's left blank because this will actually try to inherit a model from um, the vanilla minecraft and it will break the textures so don't use this at all just leave it blank um, I'm not sure what box UV is, so um, just kind of leave that alone. Um, uh, for ambient occlusion, if you're making a regular block, um, just uh, leave this as uh, checked because this basically controls the shadowing for the block. If it's something for um, that's transparent, then you're going to want to disable this because uh, when it goes into Amp Crater, it kind of gives a weird texture shadow from a far distance. It's just best to uh, disable this if you're working with transparency. Uh, but if you are working with uh, something like a 3D model, most likely it'll be fine. So don't worry about that. But if it's like a leaf texture that has transparency in it for textures, uh, disable it for sure. All right, so uh, the next thing is the texture width and texture height. I suggest leaving this uh, to default. I always do. It always works for me. So we're just going to say, OK, this is great. So we're going to hit confirm. And uh, you're actually presented with uh, pretty much the same workspace as uh, the model um, the model creator for the entities that we covered before. You have your textures on their side, your UV maps over here, your uh, cubes and stuff will be listed over here. So that's all laid out the same. Um, now there is some things that we're gonna have to talk about quickly. Hopefully it won't take too long of a video. Uh, first thing is, let's create a cube. And uh, we don't actually need to use groups for this uh, cube, so um, you might notice that you have two axes here. Over here is your pivot point, and over here is the actual um, axis of the direction of the, the model. Your north direction is always this direction. That's the direction the model is going to be facing. So let's move this, uh, let's say, over, over here about... Uh, yeah, let's do... Let's do this, and then we'll go up. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, about there. So we're just going to kind of create a couple different designs, but we also want to um, probably go about there. Okay, so you know how to manipulate the model. I've done a tutorial on how the cubes and stuff work in um, in block bench so this should be easy stuff to learn if you go back and watch the other tutorials on how to make the meat cubes and stuff like that uh, but we're gonna need a few extra tools um, I'm gonna reset this so you guys can find the tools that you need so first thing is uh, if you have 
couple of these, whoop, couple of these cubes, say like this. Um, I'm not sure if you watched the Cubic uh, Studio tutorial on calling and disabling textures. It's really important for performance. Uh, Blockbench does have support for that. I didn't think they did at first, but uh, the settings are hidden. So if your faces are up against each other and they match or you don't necessarily want them there because it's not being used, for example, this face right here and this face right here should be disabled and uh, because it's um, just not being used, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go and go to tools for the, the texture side of things. We're going to customize and then we're going to scroll down until we see a few options. Um, so we're going to need to find, uh, scroll down to the section over here, and there's going to be one called Call Face. There's also Auto Call, but I suggest doing it all manually because their auto functions don't always work the greatest in this particular program, unlike uh, Cubic Studio. So you're going to want to add the Call Face option to the list, and uh, that's much the only thing that you really need to actually worry about for calling so uh, we're going to just uh, close this window now and now you have your call face uh, for over here so that's going to uh, basically um, allow you to change the sides uh, for your calling and stuff now you don't want to do that for the interior blocks because that's not exactly how it's used uh, for the interior blocks, there's an option right here with an X. Uh, if we go over here, we can tell that the front part this way is north. So that must be south. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our block. We're going to select the south option up here. And then we're going to set um, or just basically click on the X here. And now you can see the face is transparent and it basically has no texture or rendering. Uh, you want to do the same for the other side as well. So if we go over here, this must be the north side, so we're going to click north, and then we're going to disable it, and now this side's disabled. So if these two textures are, or these two meshes are connected, it's not going to be rendering the texture on the inside, and it's going to help performance. So calling, however, is the um, opposite of that, kind of. It's for the exterior of the block. So for the edges that touch the uh, surrounding blocks and stuff, you're going to want to call. So this side here is facing uh, south. We want to go to the south side up here, and then we're going to set it to south. And it's also facing west because it never eat soggy and then wieners that's the way i learned how to follow directions so that's the way it is so west is over here so we're going to want to select west for this block too and set it to west and then we're going to do the same for um this we want it to be on north and then set this to north and we want it west as well so what this is going to do is if there's a block over here and these textures are um, connected to that block, then it's going to disable these textures and help performance on the exterior of the block. So that's basically how calling works. Um, for your actual uh, pivot point, I'm, I wouldn't be too worried about the actual pivot point. If you want to set your pivot point though to the center, it would be set to 8, 8, and 8. So that would be the center of the block right here. So you can do that if you want. Um, I don't really see any purpose for it unless there's something I'm missing. But other than that, uh, that's basically, you can use the pivot point just to organize your, your models. So now that we got that, we want to actually figure out texturing. So I'm going to actually um, quickly pause the video, grab a couple textures, and then I'm going to bring them into here. Alright, so I have uh, two textures on my desktop right now. I'm just going to uh, import texture and I'm going to select the first one and it's probably going to tell you you're going to need a new path. So I'm going to click OK. Uh, we're going to minimize this and I'll show you how to fix that if it's on the desktop. 
I'm going to create a folder. Um, actually, I already have a folder called Minecraft, so I'm just going to rename this uh, Minecraft 2. And uh, we're going to call this folder that we just created uh, Minecraft. And then what we want to do is create one called Textures inside of it. Textures, and the one inside of that should be called Blocks or whatever um, uh, type of item block or whatever you're working with. So for this one, uh, we're just going to call it block. And that's where our textures are going to go. So we're going to stick those ones in there. And then we're going to go back to here. And we're going to delete that texture. And then we're going to import the new textures that we just added. So the first one we want to import is um, the Acacia, and I think we might be able to select the other texture as well. So we'll see if that imports. Yes, it does. Okay, perfect. So if you want to basically use the textures uh, for different UV, UV mapping, then you can do it this way. I'm not sure if you can do it at a larger scale, but if you need extra UV mapping, this will work. So now we just need to texture the blocks because as you can see, they're not textured. So. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're going to need to click on the block, right click on it, and then go to texture, and then we're going to want to select the texture itself. And as you can see, it's not exactly looking like it should. So UV mapping comes in. I did cover how to do this before, so I'm just going to quickly go over it. Uh, if you go like this, you can actually change the amount of pixels. You want to kind of keep it to the ratio that it is, or it's going to look funny. And uh, you're going to want to do that for all these sides that uh, aren't disabled. So we're just going to do this a few times. And west, east, we still need east. So we'll do that. And then we're going to need up and down. So we'll do this one as well. And up and down. So like that. So as you can see, our textures are in place. You can also rotate the texture location. So say you don't like it looking or facing this direction, what you can do is uh, click on this and this will actually rotate it. And uh, there's also another way to do that. Um, if you just give me a minute to figure out what I needed to do. Uh, I think it's going to Hold on a second. Let me think about that. It's probably another setting that I didn't have. I don't have here. All right. I actually did find it and I did miss it. So uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, add the uh, UV mirror X and UV mirror Y. And uh, we're going to just move those over to this section over here, just so it's easier for us to figure out what we need. And we're going to close that. So our UV Y is here and our UV X is here. So when you're working with textures, um, this will rotate the actual texture on the face. But uh, say you want to rotate this part and or basically flip it over to this side. So we could basically click the X uh, mirror location and it flips it. So it's, this comes in handy when you need to basically um, rotate the image, but it needs to be flipped. And you can also do it the other way as well, like this. So this does it on the Y axis. So it goes this way or where the other one goes this way. So you might want to play around with that and try to match your things. It's just some of the rotations for the actual face um, like the texture over here, the setting here, won't actually rotate it to the right location that it needs and it'll need to be flipped. So with the other block, what you want to do is the exact same thing. I'm just going to quickly do that and then we'll, um, I'll show you how to export it and just double check the settings and stuff like that. So let's, uh, let me just uh, quickly set up that. So, all right, so now that we got all our textures in and everything's pretty interesting. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here. We're going to save our workspace. So we, if something does go wrong, we can go back and edit it. So we're going to save project as, and if you've named your file name, then it's going to save it as the file name here. Um, I'm just going to, it's going to save it to our Minecraft textures block folder or wherever you decide to save it to. 
So I'm gonna save it here, and then what we want to do is export, and then we want uh, a export block model. So we're gonna select that one. And that's gonna save it as a .json file, and it's gonna be saving it to the same location. So once you do that, um, what you can do is, I'm gonna minimize this, and we're gonna have our JSON file. If you don't have Notepad++, I suggest getting it. It does make uh, a lot of the coding and stuff a lot easier to work with, and you can open .json files. So I'm just gonna quickly open this with uh, Notepad++, and then we're gonna actually see our settings for the file right here. So as you can see, we have uh, two textures um, imported. So the first texture is our Acacia planks, and our second texture is the um, Emerald block. So the second one is called one, the first one is called zero, and if we look over here, uh, the little pound sign with the zero is our first texture for Acacia planks. The one down here is uh, pound sign one, which is our emerald block. Um, also, there should be a name, but we didn't actually name the blocks. If you want to make your life a lot easier when editing those files, certain cubes, um, what you want to do is rename these uh, to something like cube one or cube two and then it will show up in the file itself. So if we export this again, export block bench, and then we're just going to override this file. Let's go, we can open up this again, so yes. And as you can see here, we have a name tag now. So uh, that basically says, okay, this is the name for the file. So other than that, um, that's basically how you do it. This code right here will have no issues. Um, however, if you want to add a display um, to customize the display for the actual block, uh, again, Blockbench doesn't add the display settings. So um, what you can do is when you get your resources from Minecraft, you can go into uh, Minecraft, the actual folder, and then I'm going to go into Minecraft uh, for 1.14. So this is the basically the main folder for um, from the jar. So we're in 1.14. The rest is just my organization. So we're going to actually go to, I believe, assets, uh, Minecraft, and then we're going to go down to models, block. And then what we want to do is search for block. And we're going to search for it it shows up so block.json we're going to actually open file location and it should bring us right down to the block setting right here we're going to open this up and this is for the same rotation for regular blocks so we're just going to copy this and we're going to paste it in just below the textures doesn't really where you post it like paste it in but there is some things that you want to make sure uh, the first thing is when you paste it, um, make sure that the um, actual display settings is properly aligned. So if we pasted it in like this, uh, the display should be right here. And because you're adding a new line, it requires a comma at the end bracket. So right down here for the part that we just added in, we need a comma. So if it doesn't have the comma, it will break the JSON file. It's just the way that JSON file format works. So make sure you have a comma when you paste a new line of code in somewhere above it. Or if you're pasting it out of the bottom of the file, make sure that you put a comma right here, but it doesn't need a comma if it's at the end. So with that being said, this will add the extra display settings. Uh, you can basically change the rotation for the GUI here and scale it and all that other fun stuff. So uh, after that's done, just save it and uh, you're good to go. So you can import it to Minecraft now and it will um, work perfectly fine. So outside of that, um, thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and if you need any help with anything, um, I have a Discord channel. Uh, the links for that is in the um, 
description so you guys can uh, join the Discord channel if you need help. I am now currently only uh, working for helping people on, with issues and stuff uh, between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. on weekdays because it's just uh, a lot of work to stay um, busy on the weekends and stuff and I need a break too. So other than that, uh, see you guys next time and thanks for watching.